The Goat Owls is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single NFL game in week seven. We got a tough slate of games this week, some real good matchups. Let's break them down. Starting with Thursday Night Football, the Broncos at the Saints. And I was originally really feeling the Saints in this game. If you watch our picks video last night, I said I was monitoring some injuries. And the Saints injury list is just way too long at this moment. A big thing is they're not going to have any weapons in the passing game. It sounds like Olave and Shahid are both going to be out. If one of those guys plays, I'll steer back towards the Saints. But doesn't look good. Long list of injuries. I do think Taysom Hill could be a factor. I think the run game could be a factor. The Broncos' run defense has been solid, but the Saints could get it going. But, man, with all these injuries, the Broncos are going to stack the box, and their defense has been playing very well. Denver had some injuries to monitor as well, and Patrick Sertan probably will be out, which is a huge one. But they had other injuries, like a cornerback uh, besides Sertan. It sounds like all those guys will be playing so, don't want to overthink this right now. Too many injuries for the Saints. The Broncos defense are playing great. They are really good at blitzing. They are second in the NFL in sacks. Uh, Rattler took five sacks last week against the Buccaneers team who started to blitz them. And the Broncos would kind of take a page out of the book. Sean Payton very familiar with Dennis Allen's defense as well. But I do think the Saints defense will create some problems for the Broncos. I think both young quarterbacks will struggle through the air because the opposing defenses. And that's where I was leaning Saints with the run game. And they, they get Kamara and Taysom Hill going, but they're gonna, you're going to have to pass at some point. There's not enough weapons, too many injuries. So do not bet on this game. Do, I mean, do not bet on a winner or the spread, my suggestion. But I will bet the under in this game. 37.5, I think it's going to stay under here. 17-16 was kind of my max. I mean, if Rattler's really bad in turning the ball over, I guess the Broncos could score more. But in that case, I think the Saints would score less. This game should be all defense, and teams will be trying trying not to turn the ball over and trying to find their way on the ground where, again, Kamara could explode in that, and Taysom Hill, they get creative with him. So those are the reasons I was reigning, leaning Saints, but just too many damn injuries in this one. Uh, we'll lean with the Broncos right now. Another tricky one for me in London, the Patriots and the Jaguars was originally – you know, feeling Drake May and the Patriots against the number 32 pass defense. They can get some things going. They're a little bit more explosive now. Tough game plan because not a lot of tape with the Patriots having Drake May in there. So I do think they can get things going here. But, man, they're not going to, Lon to London until Thursday night they're going to arrive there. They're leaving after practice on Thursday. It doesn't leave a lot of time. Meanwhile, the Jags have been sitting there preparing for this game. I think that gives them a, ma a massive advantage. And kind of thinking about, about that back about that Bears game for the Jags, the Jags started off moving the ball and playing pretty good defense and then just dropping touchdowns and fumbles and, you know, just sloppy, sloppy things. And they were going against maybe the top defensive football in the Bears. So, Maybe it's a little less sloppy in this game, and they find a way to win, so I'm kind of leaning towards the Jags. Now, these first two games are the ones I've been iffy about. The rest I feel great about. We've been doing really good against the spread recently, you see right there. But these these first couple, I'm not betting on any winner, and I'm not betting on that normal line, but there's two things I do like in this game. Bet over 42.5. Again, the number 32 pass defense of the Jags, Drake May, has that explosive playability. They should get going in this game. And the Jags' offense is capable of moving the ball, of course. So, uh, And they were moving the ball early last time. They were just really sloppy. Even to start the second half, they were moving the ball, and they'll be a lot less sloppy in this game. Uh, you know, maybe some turnovers, maybe some explosive plays. 26-24, Jags, what I have. I like the Patriots if you're, if you're using them as a teaser leg, plus 13.5. Because plus 5.5 seems like too much. I think it's very realistic they can win this game. 5.5 seems like too much. A little scary to put money on that. But uh, if you use them as a teaser leg, bump that up. You know, around that 13.5 range, it feels pretty good. And you're going to pair that with some other teaser legs that I do I am recommending you'll pick your favorites out here in this one. But you know, these first two games, very, very tricky. Make sure to check out our weekly pick show already up for week seven. Got a couple other guys that join me. It's a lot of fun. It's up on the channel. Like, subscribe to notifications on while you're at it. But Seattle and Atlanta, it's a game that could go either way, honestly. Just two teams that are all offense, very explosive. And this That kind of went away for Seattle for a little bit, but they played some tougher defenses. The Falcons right now aren't the toughest defense because they're not getting much of a pass rush. And that seems to be the weakness for Seattle. I do think they get Kenneth Walker going in this game the Seahawks are a little beat up they're not playing as good against good teams the Falcons are a very good team at home I think they'll have no problem on the ground and through the air uh, to win this game if this is in Seattle I'd probably lean Seattle this is one I'm going to pass on that two and a half two and a half spread seems a little tricky didn't really hesitate to pick the Falcons even though again I do I do think the Seattle Seahawks definitely have a, a shot but I'll take the Falcons. It feels like a three-point game could come down to a coup field goal, but I like the Falcons 
24. They're getting Bijan going. We saw that last week. They continue to ride with the passing and running game. Just so one of those teams that are for sure should be two dimensional, which, which is tough to game plan for, especially while Seattle's dealing with some injuries. Go to Atlanta in that one. Tennessee at Buffalo. I got the Bills winning 24-13. This has the makings of being one of those games of the Bills just just roll. You know, they, they have some of those games. They've already had them this year where they win big. It could be this one. I thought about a little bit more of a score, but yeah, Titans might know they're outmatched, so they might come out and just try to control the clock and run the football, and the Bills are very weak stopping the run. The Titans' defense is pretty decent, too, so the Bills might not go too. I could see them scoring 27-plus, 30-plus, but might not go too crazy because the clock... Uh, in the Titans' run game, but just not enough for Will Levis and the Titans. Will Levis couldn't even get the job done against the Colts. Bills will create turnovers. They'll make plays on offense. They'll win 24-13. I think at least they could win by more than that. Uh, you can use them as a teaser leg as well. You, you know, Nine's a little bit too much. You bring that down to two and a half. That feels like a lock. I am going to call them my straight-up lock of the week, and I do have a couple more, and that'll be the next video. So turn notifications on. Stay tuned for that one, but this one should be a simple pick here. Bengals and Browns, I have Cincinnati winning in Cleveland, 27-16, to so a fairly easy victory. They're minus six. I'm going to pass on that. I mean, Nick Chubb coming back, the Bengals aren't the best on defense in general, but against the run, they're really not so hot there. So the Browns could get stuff going on the ground, and they've been playing pretty decent defenses, so they can finally get the offensive game going here. i just not expecting much. The Bengals' defense stepped up last week. The Browns' offense is just really brutal offensive line Deshaun Watson they traded Amari Cooper is this team going to feel like that they're throwing in the towel because of that not saying for sure but it could we could get that feeling the Bengals offense has been lights out even in losses last week not so much but that Giants defense and the defensive line is real the real deal and the Bengals really get things going in this in this one I know Joe, Joe Burrow hasn't been great in Cleveland in in his young career so far but and these receivers really feast in this one and, and take care of business here that offense has been Really solid this year besides the Giants game. 27-16 Cincinnati is what I have. Texans at Packers, a good one here. Two heavyweights in my opinion at least. I'm going to take the Packers 24-20. Maybe a little bit more defense. I could also see a scenario where it's a shootout like 31-27, somewhere around that range. But I'm going to predict a little more defense than expected. Uh, both teams play very well on both sides of the ball, not just offense. You know, the Packers defense got much better last week as they got Jaya Alexander back. And the Texans, they're going to, missing Nico Collins might show a little bit in this one. The Packers wearing those all whites going to look good. They're a different animal in Lambeau. They stopped the run pretty well, especially compared to the pass. You know, Mixon was a major factor last week. I, you know, he'll be solid, not much of a factor this week. Again, I didn't know. Texans definitely could win this game because they're a very good team. C.J. Stroud, very good quarterback. But I think they'll be missing Nico Collins even more this week in this one. The Packers do just enough as Jordan Love is finding his groove post-injury here. So 24-20. Green Bay wouldn't bet on it because, again, that can go either way. And, again, I think a lot of people are taking the over in this one, and I could see it. But, you know, the Texans missing Collins, and they play pretty solid defense I think we'll see stretches where it's like, all right, it's going to be a shootout. And then all of a sudden we see a stretch where it's like, no, this is all defense. I think we'll see a little bit of that. But I like the Packers at home, different animal in Lambeau, like I said, 24-20 Green Bay. Dolphins and Colts. I like the Colts this one, 26-17. I am confident, and at first glance, this is one I wanted to put money on. The Colts only favored by three, just three. And the Dolphins have been really struggling without two and all the injuries they've had. So at first glance, I'm like, oh, i got to ha hammer the Colts here, especially if Jonathan Taylor plays. And it is tempting, but the scare here is the Dolphins are off the bye. The last time they played against the Patriots, they kind of clicked a little bit more. The running game was awesome in that game. They have a collection of backs that can do some damage, obviously. And the Colts are very bad stopping the run. They were even in a win last week. They were very bad stopping the run. And the Dolphins sitting on that bye, they could have cooked something up. We're just going to pound the football. We're going to win the game that way. Uh, so that's kind of what scares me. I'm still pretty confident with the Colts, though, especially if Jonathan Taylor's back. If he's back, they can win by even more. The Dolphins also sh struggling to stop the run. Anthony Richardson just has to take care of the football here as he is expected to play. Don't get too carried away with the passing game. Stick to the ground. You know, don't love the Colts' defense, but could do enough. It's still a two-a-less Dolphins team that – Really struggles to find their way. Don't have the best offensive line in the world. So I'm going to take the Colts 26-17. Tempted to call the Colts locks and put money on them minus three. But because the bye and because the Dolphins run game got going and the Colts lack of run defense, it's scary. It's a little scary, but I like the Colts 26-17.
One of the big ones of this week, an NFC North showdown between the he some heavyweights here, the Lions and the Vikings in Minnesota. I'll take the Vikings 27-24. I could see three scenarios here. I could see this scenario, the Vikings winning a close game. I could see the Lions winning a close game. Or I could see the Vikings rolling in this one. I definitely could see that scenario. If the Lions win, I think it would stay close. I mean, they, they, they know how to beat up teams too. But I, my thinking here is just right after the Aiden Hutchinson injury, How's this team gonna, you know, react after that? Sam Darnold will have a lot of time to throw in that passing game's been deadly. Besides last week, it seems like you really can air it out on the Lions defense. And I think the Vikings will do that with those receivers and they're gonna move them around a bit. We're gonna see Jefferson and Addison both playing outside and both having reps in the slot where you really could do some damage against the Lions. It's uh it's a battle between uh two top running games on different sides of the ball, actually, where you have the Lions running game and the Vikings run defense, which is number two in the NFL. I actually prefer the Lions running game if I had to pick, but the Lions at times this year kind of go away from the run game and just try to rely on the pass game, which has also worked, but they do that in this game a little too much. Um, I think it's just overthinking and that, you know, Vikings create turnovers. They got to sit at home, get healthy and kind of come up with that, that uh, game plan here where Brian Flores, defense is still a little confusing for opposing quarterbacks. So I do like the Vikings, this one home off the bye, getting healthy where the lions are going to have to try to win their first, their first attempt without Aiden Hutchinson. We're, I think both quarterbacks should have a lot of time to throw, but Darnold will have time to throw. Vikings offensive line looking as good as ever. Uh, getting Reisner back as, as well. Uh, should get some action through the air with those receivers. So I'll take them 27-24. Not one I would bet on because, again, I could, it's kind of a 50-50 game. Uh, I also could see it, it's 50-50 game where you want to take the points with the Lions, but it's two and a half. I see a scenario Again, where the Vikings just create turnovers on defense and just roll on offense. So it's a little tricky. We'll go at Minnesota at home here. I think the Lions will get them later in the year. Eagles at Giants. I want an upset on this one. The Giants are getting three and a half points. And I like that. I like that. It's got that, uh, you know, it's over three points. You got that hook there against the Eagles. So the Giants, will, we know they got to stay close in this game. I, you know, they've been staying close with a lot of decent teams. They're putting up a fight. They're much better than they were last year. Daniel Jones, even though he isn't it, I mean, he's still much better this year, taking care of the ball a little bit better. Really, the only only bad game he had, I thought, was against Minnesota, a defense that creates turnovers. But they should be getting a lot healthier. I'm not going to take the Giants if Neighbors doesn't play, but I'm fully counting on him playing. So they're going to get him back. Andrew Thomas did go down. That's tough. But Jordan Mailata went down for the Eagles. Darius Slay dealing with an injury. Goddard dealing with an injury. Their offense has been slacking. I know they'll probably break out at some point because they have too much talent. Uh, you know, A.J. Brown was awesome in his first game back, but the Giants have been playing really good defense. That defensive line looks like it could be the best in football, led by Dexter Lawrence, who might be the best defensive player in football. Their corners are playing good. Andrew Phillips is back. He's been one of the better rookies when he's on the field. He will be on the field in this one. I just don't – the Eagles are g good for scoring 20 points around there. You know, that offense just – Hasn't really fully been getting going. They're, Saquon will have a solid game in this one. I don't think anything super crazy. I think the Giants do enough. I think Neighbors and the running back duo, you know, if Singletary's back, they do just enough in this one with that defensive line, causing the Eagles some problems like they've had on offense. So I like the Giants winning this one at home, 23-20. If this is in Philly, I'd be going with the Eagles. But in New York, Giants just getting by, plus 3.5 looks pretty good. I think worst case, they lose by 3. I just... Do the Eagles have the offense against that Giants defense who's been causing problems to win this game big? I just it's hard to count on that right now. It's gonna there's gonna be a time, maybe it's this week, somewhere this year where that Eagles offense breaks out because they have elite players on that offense, but uh, it's still a little early and and they've been a little slow right now. So this game will stay close. Give me New York football giants in this one. Raiders at Rams. I'm pretty confident with the Rams in this game. I know they're a little beat up. Cooper Cup could play, though. They're still waiting to get some other guys back, but they're a lot different home versus away. They're, they they played the Packers last time we saw them pretty tough while they're in L.A., uh, so they're in L.A. in this game here going against the Raiders, who... Yeah, aren't the best right now. They're a little they're a little sloppy, so I just don't expect them to have enough on offense. I know the Rams will do enough damage on offense. The spread is pretty large. It started off at five and a half, and I did like that for the Rams, but it is a little large, but for, for the in the Rams' favor. But I have them winning by ten points. I, I am very confident with them winning this football game, though. But we'll see. Sometimes the Raiders are sneaky and keeps game close, but and the the Rams have them outmatched. That's why I think Kyron Williams has a big game. Stafford will do enough. Um, here in LA.
Panthers and Commanders, a little tricky against the spread because it's a whopping eight-point spread in favor of the Commanders. But I, I have Washington winning 34-23. This one, again, it's a little tricky because the Commanders' defense isn't the greatest, and Jonathan Allen is now out, and the Panthers actually can move the ball. They can play some offense. So that's where, you know, I'm confident with the Commanders winning, but that's where it could stay close, and that's where you could go eight points. Man, for that Commanders' defense versus the Panthers' offense, that might be too much. But this also has the, you know, the makings of one of those Commanders' ass beatings that they been kind of delivering this year they're, they're going to have their way on offense they're going to be able to drain the clock but move the ball at will they're going to be able to convert third downs and fourth downs like they have been doing uh, pr pretty easily and if it's going to depend on this game starts when it comes to the line because the commanders do that get the ball first and do that right out the gate they're going to have too much of a lead pretty er pretty early on where the panthers probably won't be able to run the football they'll have to throw 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 and it becomes and they will be able to throw but it becomes a little more obvious and tougher you know, obvious for the defense and tougher for their offense there to do that. So I'm thinking that's more like it, what's going to happen. So 34, I think the commanders are good to score at least 31 points or at least 30 points. So 34-23. And the Panthers even played the Falcons close for most of the game last week, but they still lost by a whopping 18 points when they went against a weaker defense. So just not enough firepower for the Panthers in this one, especially on defense. Commanders, one of the better offensive football role, 34-23, but too big of a spread actually for me to tell you to put money on it, but I am confident with them winning and scoring a lot of points. Chiefs and Niners seems like a little bit of a trap game, if you can call it a trap game. It's two heavyweights, but they're, the Chiefs are plus one and a half. That surprises me a little bit, even though it's a lower line, but the Chiefs are playing really good on defense. They had a week to, uh, you know, a little bit of a break to kind of prepare to come up with some more interesting looks on offense and probably trick plays you know how different ways they can use worthy but we saw them trot out four tight ends at once on the field last week I don't know how you game plan for that especially when the Niners defense is extremely beat up very beat up you know obviously no no more of funga he came back and he's hurt again so that's that's huge in a bad way for them and Ward missed last week. I'd imagine be back this week but they're a little beat up there they're obviously beat up on offense we'll see if Mason's 100% Chiefs defense looks really good. I like the Chiefs in this game. The matchup says them. I know Purdy's been playing pretty well. They'll be able to move the ball a little bit. But, again, the Chiefs play really well on defense. So, I like the Chiefs 26-23. Quite a bit of field goals in this one is what I'm feeling. The Chiefs got to do a little bit better in the red zone. Again, I'm, I'm predicting maybe not so much there. They kick field goals. But do enough to win this game. Uh, I like using the Chiefs plus 7.5. That seems weird that you could get the Chiefs plus 7.5 at, at a decent line while using in a in a teaser um, I like that because again, even if the Niners win, it, it's got to stay close, right? I know the Niners are pretty good at home, but saw them drop one of the Cardinals at home. They keep blowing leads, so even if the they have a big lead, I would imagine the Chiefs come marching back, and at least it's going to be really close. But matchup says the Chiefs to me. Uh, both sides of the ball with the Niners injuries, even though they're a good team, I got the Chiefs winning 26 to 23. Kind of the same deal here with the Jets. Steelers uh, using the Jets in a teaser leg, like I had the the Chiefs there plus seven and a half. Seems around that range is going to be a little less odds as the Chiefs in comparison, but it seems like a really solid option if you want to do a four a four leg teaser. But I like the I like the Jets in this one. I know it's in Pittsburgh. It's tough to see them lose another Sunday night game at home. And T.J. Watt and company, this defense really could get after Rodgers. Team's been getting after Rodgers, hitting them, beating them up causing interceptions, causing you know in minor injuries. He's still able to play. So that could be the difference in this game. But And I love both defenses, but I love, I love the Jets' defense. They're not going to allow much at all in this game through the air. Uh, they're going to stack the box a little bit more, and they'll slow down the run. You know They didn't do so great against the run last week, but they'll slow it down. And they got going a little bit more in terms of explosive plays on offense. Now they have Devontae Adams, who will... I know he just got there, but he's going to be a plug-and-play fit. It's going to help them. Brees Hall got going last week. Steelers' defense is really good. In some of those losses, they have slipped up against the run, though. So I, I think the Jets' run game gets going just enough with that defense creating turnover. It sounds like it's going to be Russ, too. I'm not really sure I agree with that. I think your best bet in this game is put Justin Fields in there and run the crap out of the ball. Try to do what the Bills did on in, in terms of the, the ground, the run game there. So, But uh, it sounds like they'll go at Russ. Nothing for sure there. It doesn't really change much for me, though. Jets defense and having – no, the, mainly the different two great defenses. The difference could be the Steelers' pass rush and T.J. Watt, but the main difference for me here is I think the Jets, the Jets offense. They have way more of ability to have an explosive play or multiple explosive plays more than the Steelers have, and I think they'll do a little bit of damage on the ground. So I like the Jets. I like them with the teaser leg, you know, kind of similar to the Chiefs there. 
Uh, this game definitely should, even if they lose, it should stay very, very close. Monday night doubleheader. This is one of my favorite picks of the week. You know, I'm not going to sit here and guarantee the Bucks win the game, but I would definitely throw some some money on either if you want to play a little safer, the Bucks plus three and a half. Obviously, I like that if I'm picking the Bucks to win, but I'd throw a few bucks or a little more on the Bucks money line. Uh, some bucks on the Bucks money line there. I like the way they match up. There's a lot of tough games this week where there's not a real obvious matchup where it's like, yes, like that will take over that team. This game, I like some of the matchups for Tampa Bay at home. If this is in Baltimore, it'd be a little tough to do this, but at home, Monday night football, both these teams are playing incredible on offense. The Ravens defense is not the same as what it used to be. You could definitely... You could definitely throw on them. Their run defense looks really good, but the Buccaneers' specialty, they can do both. But Baker's tossing that ball around. Those receivers are dominant. Even the running backs are great pass catchers. So the Bucs will be able to move the ball against them. And the Ravens' offense has really been getting going uh, for multiple reasons. Lamar's playing like an MVP again, but Derrick Henry's playing like an MVP, and he's you know, obviously a monster. But look at the teams they have played recently. And not to take anything away from I think they're one of the better teams in football, but they are running all over the worst run defenses in football. Now, in the Ravens, Derrick Henry, that their play style, Lamar Jackson, they're capable of running all over anyone, but this is a totally, totally different matchup. The Buccaneers have been dominant against the run lately, um, especially the yeah, last few weeks. They've been absolutely dominant. The Ravens are also good against the run, but the Ravens' best part of their game is the run game. They've been throwing well recently, and you can throw on the Bucs, but when they are on their game. They're running first. It's opening things up. It's causing problems for the defense, making them stack the box, and then boom, you throw on them. The Bucks will slow. They won't stop there, Henry. They will slow him, and that will put the Ravens in some awkward situations. They will still score points, but I trust the Bucks to do just enough with that run defense and be able to score the points on offense. I think both Mike Evans and Chris Godwin have a big game. I think Mike Evans has a, especially a big game here. Baker balls out. And I think they'll win this game 31-24. The Ravens' key to success here is run Lamar Jackson. The Ravens stop the run. Your traditional, or the Bucks, excuse me, stop the run against your traditional run. Just running backs, they'll be able to slow Derrick Henry up the middle. But if you specifically a lot of you know read options and Lamar pulls it, takes off, the Buccaneers might have some issues with that type of run game. That's how the Ravens win this game. If and, and if if we if I missed this game and you told me the Ravens won, I'd be like, I bet you Lamar ran pretty well in that game. He usually runs well, but I bet you, you know, he would run especially well. But I like the Bucs in this one. Uh the over under is only 48 and a half and it feels like a lock to be over, but Vegas putting that line there tells me they either think the Ravens defense is finally going to pick it up but they're weak against the pass. The Buccaneers are thrown all over everyone. Or they think the Ravens' offense gets slowed because it's a different matchup, and that's kind of where my head was at a little bit. Again, they might, they might not be able to run the ball like they normally are able to. So matchup says the Bucs at home, but the Ravens, plain and simple, might just be the better team and might just overpower them to win this game. But I like the Bucs, 31-24. That's a sneaky one there as they're getting three and a half points on Monday Night Football. And maybe a little bold, I'm going with both underdogs on Monday Night Football. And it's a squeaker. This is my squeaker of the week. Close game, that means. Cardinals wearing the All Blacks, winning 24-23 against the Chargers. You see my picks against the spread uh, for all these games. It doesn't mean bet on all of them. We'll have our locks video next. But, uh, yeah, I'm feeling the Cardinals this one. I'm monitoring the Marvin Harrison Jr. In, uh, concussion right now. But they don't play till that late slot on Monday night. So maybe he'll play. Chargers played really good last week. They picked it up a little bit with the explosive plays on offense, and their defense is playing very, very well. The Cardinals are weird. One week they look really good. One week they look really bad. It's no in-between. They Even in losses, like they're like, I'm going, that team's legit, but it's back and forth. They were awful last week. Maybe they pick it up this week. They're at home, primetime football. And if you look at the teams the Cardinals have played, They've played all of the best offenses in football. If you literally go look at their schedule, they played all of the best offenses in football, and the Chargers are pretty much the opposite of that. The, the reason to pick the Chargers maybe would be, yeah, everyone can move the ball in the Cardinals, so the Chargers can move the ball, and they play great defense, but it's a different matchup for the Cardinals. Uh, you know, I think they kind of get a break you know, from playing those explosive offenses, and they do, I, you know, the Chargers have been good stopping the run. I'm fully not buying in on that right now. I think James Conner has a pretty solid day. I think Kyler has a solid day running as well uh but would like for this pick to stay i would like marvin harrison jr to play but both teams beat up at corner chargers beat up at corner they're kind of scrambling for some right now uh that could be a factor especially if harrison jr plays here so feeling the cardinals feeling both upsets on monday night had a lot of upsets this week 
had to tweak some of those picks because of injuries and travel reasons for the Patriots earlier in this video. So, yeah, a lot of tough game. It feels like, looking at my bets, it feels like the week of the teaser in the underdogs. Take teams with the points on all the teams. Take teams with the points. Pair some together. Get some extra points in there. Um, you know, that it seems to be the picks this week. So, there you have it. Uh, we are on fire the last two, couple of weeks. This week's a lot tougher, but we'll see if we can get things going once again. But check out our other videos a lot on the channel for week seven and a lot more to come here. Again, our locks video, but that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.